Hello guys and welcome to the part number 42 of the Note Editor tutorial series. My name is Pavel Krupala from BlenderFree.com and today in this part we are going to add new socket position to the center of the left and right. As you can see here, we will also refactor a code and we will add some content to our input and output sockets. So I hope you are excited and let's start coding. If we have a look at our example here, it would be nice to be able to style it and for that we should finish our input and output. We want to put something like uh, in the content here, we want to put something like a Q line edit or something and here should be a label. Also it would be nice to be able to set these uh, sockets into the center position. So let's do that. Here in our input we can create a new class for the content and let's name it calc input content which is going to derive from qdm node content widget and define in it UI and let's create edit. Uh, I would do want to store it so self edit equals to q line edit and by default let's put just one there and the parent will be self also we want to set alignment that's gonna be qt align right and let's import that so from pi qt5 qt core import everything also we do want to set the object name as we are doing uh, in the rest of the contents we are using so self edit dot set object name and that's gonna be self node content label object name obj name like this also we can create the output so let's go here create class calc output content that's again gonna derive from QD and node content widget. Define init UI. Let's call self label is going to be Q label. By default, it can be the biggest mystery of this universe. So that's 42. And self. Again, we are going to set the alignment this time is going to be qt align left and self dot label dot set object name is going to be self node content label obj name like this also each of these uh, nodes we are going to style a little bit different so content label obj name for input can be calc node input and we can copy that round for the output perfect and to use our classes in the node we can just say define init inner classes and override this method with self content that's gonna be calc input content with self and self.gr node is going to be calc graphics node. The same will go for the output class. But instead of the input content, we are going to use calc output content. And since we are setting the label obj name, we can override this for the operations here. So for the plus, we are later going to use let's say bg the same for the minus i guess and for the multiplication and division we can say that obj name is going to be calc node mul and calc node diff so let's test it out if it works for the input i should see a label here perfect we got one for the output we got 42 that's perfect too and we get plus minus multiply 
and divide. All of them work, perfect, and let's try to figure out how to put the socket on the center now. First of all, let's have a look where we can define the positions. Uh, so I guess we can go to the node base, which is here. Let's open up the node. And we are using init settings for setting the input socket position and output socket position. So I will copy these two lines here. Let's go to the calc node base and override this function, define init settings. We can call the parent method in its settings and then we can override these two input socket position and output socket position so instead of bottom and top we can say something like center left center and right center perfect let's find these ones and these are in the node socket that means we do need to add left center and also right center and here is a problem. If we now change these numbers like this, then all the time something was uh, number two is now going to be left center once we implement it. And it's not going to be left bottom anymore. So that means all of our files which we created here, like the graph.json, graph2.json and others, will stop working. However, in our case we didn't release our library or our code to the public, so we won't be destroying all of the files uh, somebody else already created. Otherwise you should be definitely careful if you change values like these ones for example. You would need probably to solve the back compatibility with the old files. However, in our case, let's go and change it. And I already fiddled with this around and it would be really awesome to know how many sockets are actually on one side. So we could pass this information to the socket and we can say something like count on this node side. By default is going to be one. And since we are here already, Let's even pass the information if this socket is actually input or output. So let's call that is input. By default, it's going to be false. And let's store these variables here. So self dot count on this node side is going to be count on this node side. Self dot is input is going to be is input. And for convenience, we can also say is output equals to not self dot is input. I see we are setting the position of the graphical socket here. So we can create a new function for that. Let's call it set socket position and paste this code here. We can use self index and self dot position. And we should also pass the number of nodes on this side or, or number of sockets on this side. So self dot count on this side. And I see we do use this function here also. So let's copy that. Here we should call set socket position like this. And that should be probably everything we need to do for the socket. So the socket is being instantiated in the node class in the function in its sockets. So this is the place. We are already passing the node index position etc. So let's extend that. Here is the input so we can say count on this side. This is going to be the length of our inputs and also we can say is input is true. So count on this side is going to be length outputs is input is false. Now let's write it like this. And here below, here is our get socket position. Where are we actually calculating the position of the sockets? So if we have a look, we are definitely setting the X and then we are calculating the Y value. So the x should be 0 if it's left top 
bottom and also it should be the center so left underscore center this should be okay here we are trying to do if statement if it's on the bottom and else in the alter times it was uh, the top so instead of else let's write l if position is in left top or right top we can write else statement here and say y is going to be zero and this condition should never happen however if it does we know that something is wrong so let's keep it like this and we can create a new branch here for position in left center or right center and here we can write our code however uh, if I'm looking here in the height, edge size and padding, I do not know anymore what these values are actually and how they are being used. So let's go ahead to the graphic node, which is here. Let's try to make them more clear or descriptive at least. So here we are setting the position of the title and we are using underscore padding and in this case we could set the position or call this instead of padding the title horizontal padding so instead of underscore padding shift f6 you can say title horizontal padding like this and also when we are using the horizontal padding we should use the vertical one so title underscore vertical padding we can say that to be 4 also and let's have a look now it makes a little bit more sense that we are offsetting it by x title horizontal padding also this one makes sense let's have a look more what's going to be here here is the edge size plus title height plus edge size again edge size edge size edge size however we do know that we are uh, creating a rounded rectangle for example here and here we are asking for the edge size again so probably the edge size should be shift f6 edge roundness like this and this should work however it didn't replace our overwritten names here so edge size roundness this was title horizontal padding and also we are using title vertical padding so let's try to run it again and let's have a look and we got an exception left center is not defined and that is here okay so from node editor dot node socket import left center and right center nice let's start it again here is the input it's on the zero position because it should be on the center and we got the exceptions also running up here so let's have a look get socket position takes three positional arguments but four were passed or given in the set position which is here get socket position one two three perfect get position get socket position we are passing also three here the third one fourth one is the self so let's have a look here in the node and here we should pass now let's call that number out of and let's say by default that's gonna be one and we are running without exception perfect so these should be centered and they are on the top but we get no exception now which is perfect so for, for the center position it would be nice to know number of sockets so num sockets that can be the value we are passing we can get the total node height so node height is going to be self.grnode.height also we can calculate the top offset so 
so the top offset is going to be self.grnode.titleHeight plus two times self.grnode.title vertical padding. That's right. So that means that the available height where we can put our nodes, so available height, should be node height minus the top offset. Because this is basically the title with the padding. So we don't want to put these things here. Also, we can calculate the total height of all of the sockets on this side. So that's gonna be total height of all sockets. And that's going to be number of sockets we got multiplied by socket spacing, which we are using. Number of sockets like this. So that means our new top value is going to be available height minus total height of all sockets. So the y value now should be top offset plus index multiplied by self dot socket spacing plus new top divided by two. Let's try that. Input. This one looks to be in the center. Also the output and add, but they are slightly moved a little bit up so we can use the title vertical padding here. So let's go to the calc node base and let's say that this one is going to be, let's say 10. Input. Yes, and now they look, they are in the middle, which is perfect. And when we go to the node graphic node, here is the init content and we are using the edge roundness now for placing the content inside of the node. However, the edge roundness isn't a good name for it. So let's go ahead here and create also the self.edge padding. So let's set it to 10 and here in the init content replace the edge roundness here because this should be the padding inside of the node without the title height. Like this. Let's try that, nothing should change. Perfect. And to get rid of this padding here, we can go to the calculator node base and we can say self.edge padding is going to be zero and as you can see now it actually works here. We can also test quickly the roundness and put 20 there and as you can see we got really round nodes now. So let me revert it back to the five or let's type six here doesn't actually matter too much however here we go and to check out our node editor our example we do set edge size which is not present here anymore this should be edge roundness this should be title vertical padding Let's try it again, crashing again. Here the Y position should be title vertical padding. Let's try it again, edge size, which is here. And now we are running, perfect. So let's try to open our old examples. So for example the graph, as you can see, this position changed. Also the graph 2 has changed. 
So we need to fix that. And to ease our life, I'm going to delete these examples we were using in the calculator. Perfect. Let's open up this one. The graph 2. This got two nodes. So let's use the first example because we do have three nodes here. And manually, let's write that the position will be 1, 1, 1, and the output 4. Second node with, will have input positions 2, 2, 2, and the output socket position should have 5, and this should have 3, and the output socket position should be 6 like this. I'm just going to edit the configuration here and navigate to the examples example test apply and OK and let's try to open it. So the graph 2 is still broken but the graph 0 should have all of the nodes on a different positions. So here is on the bottom, that one is on the center. This one is a little bit clunky, I guess. However, the last one is working. So let's have a look on this one. And to fix that, let's have a look again on our function. And in the first place, uh, this is being retrieved correctly. Also, this one is correct, this one is also correct. We should definitely add self.grnode.h padding. The available height is correct and both of these calculations are correct also. However, instead of writing this, let's comment that out and print out or set the y to be for now top offset. Let's test that and everything is at the top, so the top offset looks to be correct. However, next thing we do want to get is the center of the available space. So let's add available height divided by 2. I will test it again and now we should be in the middle. So let's have a look. We got two huge squares up to the bottom. We should be definitely somewhere here at least. So let's uh, add index minus half of the socket and multiply this by self socket spacing. I will do that again. We are up to here, so we should be starting around here. This one looks correct. However, if we got multiple items here, we should move it a little bit up by the half of the size of all of these sockets here. So if num of sockets is bigger than one, we can say y is going to be minus equal self socket spacing, definitely and multiply it by number of sockets minus one and all of this divided by two. So let's try that. File open. I will move it to this line, up to this line and this should move a little bit up and it's not. That means uh, our num sockets doesn't contain the value bigger than one. And this is being passed here so I did a little bit of debugging and I find out that actually when we are loading the file we are creating the sockets here in the deserialization which is nice however in our case we are creating sockets with node index position and socket type we are definitely missing the multi-edged information however this is being handled here and that's completely fine inside of the socket. So if we go back, there is another thing we have been adding and that's definitely 
information about count on this node side. So we can pass in num inputs and also we should pass is input is true. And the same thing will go here at the bottom. So count on this node side is num outputs and is input is going to be false. And to calculate that we can say num inputs equals to length of data inputs and the same can go for num outputs like this and let's try it again open graph JSON and when I move it to the square here you can see we are in the middle here which is perfect and it looks like it's in the middle so that's nice I will go ahead to the graph too here we were using position 2 which we should rewrite to position 3 and 3 was for the right top before so let's type 4 here and the same will go for the rest of these here position 3 and this one is position 4 let's try to open both of them and this should be bottom on top in the center perfect still working and the second graph should be as we remembered and it looks like so that's perfect let's go ahead to calculator and try that one again so the input here it is in the center center again and the add looks like it's in the middle also perfect finally so thanks for watching and see you at the next part